Hey everybody, welcome to episode 126 of the Toys for Games cast. We are recording this on a Thursday evening, October 19th, 2017. I am one of your hosts, Josh Brown. I am joined by the man who is possibly the most excited Philly sports fan in the country right now, Jason Greer. Hi, Jason. Good evening, Josh. It is a good time to be a Philly sports fan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good time. Things are things are looking good up there. Surpri- surprisingly well. Yeah. I'm waiting for something bad to happen, but sure, hanging in there. Um. The Pacific Northwest sports fan, our best days are always the day of or the day before the opening of each season, because sure. that's the only time that there's hope. Yeah. <laughs> After that, it's just downhill from there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's uh, it's been fun. I, I have a weird vested interest in Philly sports now uh, that I never necessarily had before. So mm. it's it's fun following along with teams on the other side of the country um yeah it, it's it's penn state man who who saw this coming they're a good team uh, i think good you team. did lots of people yeah. did you True. know they, they benefited from other teams losing of course and yep which kind of still every year continues to prove why preseason rankings are ridiculous and so bad should be abolished but whatever I, I wouldn't say Alabama's the best country or best team in the country. No, nope. you know they just happen to start at number one. They haven't lost, so there they sit. They haven't right. played anybody like they're the best team in the country. They're not going to play anybody. No, no. <laughs> like one team maybe. Yeah, I mean, good job on handling hey. Mizzou, but you know. Yeah, if you're playing Mercer as the second last team <laughs> that you play, okay. Uh, but no, how are things for you, man? It's, it's been a couple of weeks since we talked. How are things going? Things going well. Busy, getting busy at work and busy time here. So it's uh, been going. Yeah, you are but, transitioning uh, into the fall season, aren't you? Yes, yeah. It's finally getting cold over here. Um, so it it's starting to pick up business a little bit. So it's it's nice to finally get busy at work a little bit. Right. Um, feel like I'm actually doing something besides chucking pencils in the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Are you antsy? I mean, you haven't been on any like serious vacations in a couple of months. Like, how's that? I know. Going for you? I know. I'm hanging there. It's it's rough because um, ended up not being able to go to New York Comic Con. Um, so that was my one little mini trip. So like, my next trip probably isn't until the honeymoon. You know? Wow. Because I think I'm taking I think I'm taking one week off, like a month before the wedding, mm-hmm. and just getting a buttload of house projects done because sure. um, there's some stuff I'm hiring for so I'm going to bring stuff in so then you know don't need to be here but obviously a lot of people like if the ha- you know, homeowners at least around right. so I can work on the air stuff while they're doing that and just trying to do a huge house transformation so hmm. and then otherwise taking two weeks for a honeymoon and then no trips again yeah <sighs> it's always nice checking in with your uh, globe trotting life um, I have a question for you Shoot. We're both fans of social media. Yes. Uh, we're both fans of, like, really good social media managers. Sure. You know, people that run accounts for brands and whatnot that do an exceptional job. Uh, a lot of sports teams have, have really good people running their Twitter accounts and, and whatnot. Um, What's a uh, a fast food restaurant that you could think of off the top of your head that does really good at social media, specifically like Twitter? Uh, hundred percent Arby's. Okay, mm-hmm. solid. Any other ones? Hmm. Hmm. Wendy's is, isn't bad, right? After they had the whole uh, Nugs thing. Sure. Yeah, they did good with that. Hmm. Let me ask you this. Sure. What do you know about the uh, KFC Twitter handle? Well, I don't think I know anything about it. Okay, don't look it. I won't. Don't look. Um, I won't. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, they're famous for pretty much one thing, right? Yep. What are they famous for? When they got rid of uh, Honey Barbecue Wings no, and made no. Jason very mad. No, no, that's not what they're famous for. That's what they're infamous for. That's true. For their chicken. 
Right. And but, for the Colonel Sanders. Right. But the the flavor of the chicken, right? Sure. Which it is WWE. Yeah. Crispy. That, that's true. Crispy. Eleven urban spices, right? That, sure. that special yep. Colonel blend, blend of spices. Right. Yep. Okay, here we go. I had to set that up to make this special. KFC, the Twitter account, follows eleven people. <laughs> okay. Okay. They have, you know, over a million followers themselves, but they only follow eleven people. Of those eleven people, they follow all five Spice Girls and six guys named Herb. <laughs> they follow ah. eleven urban spices. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Look it up. It's 100% legit. It's so amazing. <laughs> the random guys named Herb, I have no idea what they are. They're like writers and, I mean, they're all verified accounts, but, like, there's a city council president. There's uh, a trainer, referee, and martial artist. A writer. I don't think I know a single person named Herb. No. Well, they found six of them. <laughs> Probably only Weird. six verified herb accounts. Honestly, that's impressive they found verified ones, too. Yeah. Did they just do this? or did... I have no idea. I just don't, I think it's just been under the radar. That's so good. But then there's all five Spice Girls, so... <laughs> that's solid. <laughs> it's good that, that because... That beats uh, Kona Bryan following one random person. Yeah. Yeah. What's good about it is you... They don't make it, like, apparent... You right. know, like, there's no fanfare behind it. It's just, like, you have to dig in to figure out which 11 people KFC decides to follow on their Twitter accounts. And it then you like have to look CEO at the list. or something. And... Yeah. And if you don't know who the Spice Girls are or something like it, no, that, li- that list means nothing to you. But you put all the pieces together, somebody deserves a raise. That's what that oh. equals. That's hilarious. So Did good. Did you see, we said about, uh... Social media accounts. Did you see the Red Sox Yankees the other day? Mm, I don't know if I did. The Red Sox, this is on like Tuesday, I think it was, whenever game three or game four was. Okay. So like Tuesday, I think it was. Um, yeah, it was Tuesday. Uh, the Red Sox tweeted out some video. I think it was the anniversary of some Red Sox Yankees game, or I don't know if the Yankees were even involved, but the Red Sox just tweeted out today is essentially a holiday. And the Yankees, who are obviously in the uh, the championship series, uh, tweeted and said, oh, it's a work day for us. Five o'clock if you're free. <laughs> <laughs> and they just tweeted back with their old eye emojis. The yeah. Red Sox did. I'm yeah. like, that's pretty dang well funny. <laughs> Good stuff, man. I, I love that kind of stuff. That That is, like, some of the best parts about Twitter, you know. Um, yeah. Overall, like... <laughs> Twitter could be a pretty dep- depressing place, uh, but man, the people that use it well, just I love it. I love it so much. Not not uh, GameStop when they went full in attack mode on Facebook the other day. Yeah, oof, oof, <laughs> man. <laughs> and then try to defend it. Yeah, just sometimes you just back away from that kind of thing. Just go get a cup of coffee. And yeah, just tap somebody else to come in. Yep, tuck your tail between your legs and, and head out to the sunset. I don't know. Um. <laughs> Uh, before we start the show officially and properly, I do want to say a big thank you to our show sponsor, as always. He is Devin Lachinsky. Um You can find him on Twitter at D-L-A-S-C-H. And uh, he just launched a new YouTube channel. Um, it's Macking on Gaming, uh, M-A-C-I-N-G, then on gaming. Uh, his first video he put up is a review of Friday the 13th, the video game. Uh, which he actually recorded at Crystal Lake. Uh, really? Yeah. So if you're familiar with like the franchise, like that's a really cool thing that he did. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so really cool over there. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes and everything like that. But go over there and uh, give Devin Lachinsky some love and tell him we sent you. And I'm sure he would definitely appreciate that. So uh, thank you, Devin. And thank you to everybody that uh, decides to go check it out. Found out this week he's a PS4 system collector. Mm, mm-hmm. So uh, he had, let's see, one, two, I think it's five. Nope, seven PS4s. And only one PS4 Pro. Sure. But of those things, but send a picture of the ones he has because he was bummed that there's two uh, um, 
Battlefront 2 PS4s. Now, I posted the pictures of both of those, but the official blog post of the U.S. only shows the one. European shows two. So I don't know if Europe's getting mm. the second one, and we're not. I didn't dive that much into it. That would make sense, once, though. Once again, uh, PlayStation's custom consoles are not the not, best. Not, not the best. Not the best. <laughs> very. Uh, it seems very much, uh, oh, crap, these are due today. And yeah. done. <laughs> Copy, paste. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised they don't ever ship with, like, IGN watermarks on them or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Photo stock watermarks. I was telling, I was talking to Michael about that the other day, my brother-in-law, and I was telling my sister, and she's laughing, and my nephews were there, and they're both, like, trying to figure out what I was talking about. It was very hard to explain it to, like, an elementary kid. Like, yeah what all this was and they couldn't really see the logo because they didn't really know what to see and you know it's a little bit of a complex thing you have to somewhat notice sure but it was, it was very hard to try to explain it i think they started laughing just so they felt like included but <laughs> still the funniest thing yeah yeah i yeah explaining that to a kid would be difficult what a watermark yeah. is and why yeah. they exist <laughs> <laughs> never thought about that huh. who knows um well, before we start talking about the big news of the week, uh, which there's some big news, um, depending on how you look at it. Uh, but first, you wanted to kind of give an update on the uh, status of Toys R Us, our favorite toy store. Yes. Yeah, so we got some uh, bad news the other day. Well, you can actually look at it both ways. Um, it, it sounded like bad news at first. Yeah, and I'm actually fully on board. Yeah. Um. So they did. It, it kind of ramped up out. Of no, I don't say out of nowhere, but ramped up fast. Uh, I mean, this has been discussions for what, like five years plus, probably. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it's gonna happen, and then all of a sudden it ramped up really quickly, and then it was like could happen any second, and then it bam, happened that night. <laughs> um. So Toys R Us did file for bankruptcy. Uh. But it's important to note. Uh. This is something that like the modern age media hurts them. Um, because bankruptcy now has this um, inclination to it that means that they're like closing doors and wrapping right. up, which isn't isn't necessarily true. Um, There's means, many different forms and levels of bankruptcy out there. Chapters and mm-hmm. yeah. So obviously, one yes, it means they're not in the best financial place. Sure, uh, but doesn't mean they're you know close up shopping. It means mean there's some stuff that like um, they're behind paying like Mattel and I think Hasbro and different people bills for different things and whatnot yeah um have a big debt and but like instantly that day when they fought max they also announced they got like this funding from something they have a new board um to help through this and like mattel's on it and like you know so they're walking because again they need toys R Us to survive also absolutely um and it's one of those i don't know how much this was pre-planned already but this fall already feels like the most big change at toys r us in a while um, I mean, they are legitimately rebranding almost. Um, shout out to uh, Play Fusion. The people who make Light Seekers uh, made a Toys R Us app, which you should download and go check out. And it has a bunch of AR, uh, augmented reality games for mm-hmm. your phone in Toys R Us stores. So, like, you scan different things, you can play different games, unlock different stickers and whatnot. Um, so, it's pretty cool. Again, especially if you have kids, it gives them something to do while you're shopping. Um, to do a bunch of cool things um, that, like,. Um, um, they're having like a parents only night so like 8 to 10 I think on like a Sunday and Thursday night just parents can go shop if you want to you know go shop toys without the kids sure um, do a bunch of really interesting stuff they have a new uh, they debuted at New York Comic Con but I think all stores are going to get it um, they're going to have like a uh, um, pop culture booth per se in each store that's going to have like the latest pop culture things obviously headlined with uh, pop vinyls yeah yeah uh, and some time and stuff like that, but again, pretty interesting change with it. And they're doing what they can to survive. They rebranded the website, redid it. it. Looks nicer. I don't like it as much. I think I'm just growing pains with it. <laughs> um, sure. But um, you, you know, they're doing what they can to change a bunch of stuff. And you know, good. Glad to see they're coming out swinging, coming out hard. So yeah. Um, one thing I'm most excited for is we're getting uh, maybe w- one and maybe two Jeffrey Pop vinyls. Mm-hmm. One is definitely flocked. So, yeah. pretty pumped for that. Pretty yeah. pumped for that. And it looks pretty cute. Unlike, I don't know if you've seen, have you seen the Jeff, I think I showed you before, the Jeffrey Lego set? Yes. Yeah, that was and weird like looking. Horror film. Yeah. So, 
Because, like, every time I pass, I'm like, I really want this, but also I really don't. Because it's <laughs> terrifying. Um, so, um, but yeah, so it's 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 a shame, you know, obviously like that, but by no means think uh, Toys R Us is closing, uh, at least not yet. I mean, obviously this holiday season is going to be big for them because this right. is when they're making, I think, what they say, like 70% plus probably mm-hmm. of their business, so... We'll yeah, I, I, I think the important thing was like the people that they owed money to, uh, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, they were all on board with like restructuring um, the payment plans to allow them to stay open and to continue to make money, uh, which, you know, that doesn't always happen in, in right. certain bankruptcy cases. And, and like, you know, the, the creditors will say, hey, no, like. If we're not going to get our money, we'll take money, a bailout from, you know, the government or whatever and call it good because they just want their money. But there is an interest with Mattel and these other big corporations that Toys R Us continues to stay open long term. That's good for everybody. So it, it, it did help that the people that, you know, they had really bad contracts with for years now that they've been suffering with. Um, are willing to work with them and, and make this try to work for everybody because everybody's kind of in the same boat here, you know? Um, like you were saying the first time we were talking about this, uh, a lot of it sure is online shopping, Amazon and that kind of stuff, but there's also a, a very real swing into like this digital age where kids just flat out aren't playing with toys, you know? Right. Um, they're making tablets for toddlers at this point because it's cheaper and easier and that's what everybody everybody has a screen in front of them some sort of screen so kids aren't playing with toys in the same way that they did when we were kids or you know when my kids were kids even you know it has grown so quickly that it is a different market out there overall so to see these companies kind of band together to, to help Toys R Us limp along um, is refreshing. It's nice to see. Um, but yeah, we'll see how the holiday season treats them. Yeah. Um, did you see Did you see the uh, uh, the Toys R Us van thing coming to like the football games? Mm, yeah. Um, what was the first one at? Um, what was it? I don't know. Oh yeah, that's right. It was first game Saturday was uh, Texas Longhorns versus Kansas State Wildcats. Mm. Okay, that's a big matchup. Uh, October seventh, sure. October fourteenth, Southern Illinois Salukis versus the Iowa State Redbirds. Yep, or the Illinois State Redbirds. Yeah, I mean, sure. I wanted to go to that game. I don't know about you, but and I was definitely gonna look for the Toys R Us van. <laughs> <laughs> so random um but and they're going to like auburn and florida and lsu and colorado like all this makes sense except for that weird i it was so random when i saw that i'm like they're going where were one of those teams like a a champion in one of the lower divisions maybe last year maybe it's the only thing i can think of yeah or one of the main toys r us ceos like went to school there or something yeah. That's, that's the only thing I could think of is that they have to have some kind of personal connection yeah. there. Huh. Anyway, uh, you know, we were, we're all in favor of Toys R Us staying open. It's uh, a store I think both of us enjoy going to on a regular basis. And uh, it would be sad to see them go. But as of right now, everything still is okay. They haven't closed any stores. They haven't announced the closing of any stores. Business as usual. So, yeah. There we go. Yeah, and they, I it, like their their PR blog. It seems like every day they're announcing something they're doing, and all stuff like seems sweet, you know. And I'm like, um, it's it's all like interesting stuff, and I've been on board. And this, I'm not criticizing the move. I'm criticizing the the timing of the move uh, on the 16th. So that was what uh, Monday, mm-hmm. whatever days. Uh, headline. Um, Toys R Us plus Ed Ham or EDU Ham equals musical magic. Uh, as most pop culture fanatics like myself know, Hamilton is a must-see Broadway musical with heavy award talent, blah, blah, blah. 
We're super excited that the Toys R Us Children's Fund, a.k.a. the charitable giving arm of Toys R Us, Inc., has donated $1 million to Hamilton Education Program, Innovative Education Curriculum, which Lynn Miller and Miranda helped create in 2016 that focuses on... So, anyways, they're bringing, like, Hamilton music to, like, different schools, okay. which is awesome. Yeah. But, one, don't see how that really relates to Toys R Us, per se, you know, like... Sure. You know, so, but also, are you in a position to donate a million dollars to, you know... <laughs> Yeah, financially you're in debt. Like I, like I'm not criticizing them donating stuff, but like, I it didn't really match up to, you know, something that Toys R Us would be sure associated with. I don't know. It just always seems weird. It's like it's always like that person is like, hey, I need help with money. Hey, I just got a sweet tattoo. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> you just asked for money. Like, yeah. Who, who knows? You know, it's hard to say. You know, I mean, that could have been money. You know, a while ago and, and funds and. Yeah, that yeah. they've just put away and been waiting to, to right. give to them or set up or, you know, and, and that sort of, I mean, I'm not a financial legal expert by any means, uh, but like charitable, charitable contributions, like even if you're, like the you know, taxes down. Yeah, like there's, yeah. <sighs> man, it's a, whew, it's, it, it's a, it's a deep hole if you want to start going down into how to, uh, save or make or shave off a few pennies here and there <laughs> trust me <laughs> i'm not i'm not even trying hard when i do it yeah and and it's all like it's just what TurboTax recommends it's not even me being like sneaky with stuff right but it's just it's just funny the stuff that they're like oh make sure you exclude this I'm like okay yeah i mean can you imagine doing that with like a multi-billion dollar industry yeah. <laughs> company man like i i sit in uh our, our monthly meetings at my corporate office and uh, we have two finance guys there, and sometimes when they just are talking about like different write offs that they're doing or moving funds from one area to another, like my eyes just glaze over. I'm like, I I don't even know what you're talking. <laughs> like, are, is the company still doing good? Yeah, all right, let's move on. Let's cool. You know, it's it's complicated stuff. That's why they get paid the big bucks, though. Indeed. Um, awesome. Sorry, this is complete random. Sure. Real quick, but news just crossed my Twitter feed. Okay. Lego Harry Potter Hogwarts Castle direct to consumer set in 2018? Question mark. What? That uh, DTC is their big sets, so like the Disney Castle uh-huh. and the uh, um, the Ghostbusters thing. Yeah. Uh huh. Like a couple hundred dollar, couple thousand piece thing. Yep. Yep. Oh man, sign me up for that. Can I just like give my credit card now or yeah. like? Because <laughs> there's. There was a blog post, a rumor before that like uh, Harry Potter sets coming back next year. Mm-hmm. Not, not just Fantastic Beast sets, but like mainline Harry Potter sets, including a coachable minifigure blind bag set. But Uh-oh. I would absolutely be on board with the Hogwarts. <sighs> Woo, my! I have um, a serious interest in this now, Jason. Yeah. Um, and you're making me all twitchy right now. Like this is. <laughs> Uh, a year ago, I, I would not have cared so much, but um, hmm. yeah, <laughs> that's that's exciting. Uh, just finished the fifth book, by the way. I, yeah, so yeah, good stuff. Two more to go. Um, sad. I'm nervous. Uh, I don't like the direction of the story. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that right now. Um, it's, it's 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 not it's not trending upwards, Jason. <sighs> I'm worried. I'm worried about a lot of things and a lot of people, but mm. Mm. I don't know. <sighs> anyway, uh, let's talk about the big news of the week, shall we? Let's do it. Uh, Lego Dimensions. Lego Dimensions, part of the podcast, is sponsored by our good friend, the one, the only, the lone goldfish, a.k.a. Evan Parker. You can find him over on Twitch twitch.tv slash the lone goldfish or hit him up on twitter the lone goldfish tell him hi he would love to hear from me i guarantee it jason lego dimensions why are we are, um, are we talking about lego dimensions this week because they announced what's to come for year three finally nada oh unfortunately oh why are we talking about this week we are talking about your gamer came out the future story Mm-hmm. Um, talking about the the headline is the sad slow death of Lego Dimensions. Everything is not awesome. <laughs> good, good subtitle. 
<laughs> oh, that was a subtitle. You you weren't yeah. adding. That? I didn't make that up. That's oh, the actual hey. subtitle of the article. Good, good Sub- on them. Subheading, I guess you might say. Yeah, uh huh. I like that. Okay, let's uh let's break this down. They yeah. So the actual um article um there's no exact. Um, like a reason it came out this week per se. It looks like something they just might have been storing for a while, been working on. It's a it's a long feature story that's very good, very good story. Uh-huh. Um, it's not like a quick blog post like, hey, it's canceled. It's kind of talks to the recap of like the mentions when it was announced. Um, you might remember your gamer is the one who initially leaked like the mentions right way back when. Um, so you and I kind of speculated before we recorded that maybe they're sitting on it to give. TT Games a chance to respond or comment or something like there's a multitude of reasons why it's just now getting posted but we have our suspicions yeah so it goes through the whole history of it all um you know about the season two and stuff didn't sell well um some of the issues that they had about you know having unique bolds and that set doesn't sell well that affects their bottom line for the entire company because they had this invest in buying you know a small thing because again, Lego is anything if not high quality. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's, yep. that's that's their main thing that keeps them alive. Like I've talked before, if you go buy like, I like Assassin's Creed had a Mega Block set. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'll go get that. Holy crap, the thing is awful quality. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, Lego. I mean, it's just cheap. It's just plastic mold. Think how much plastic you have in your world, and how much plastic is cheap. And like, again, everybody says Lego's expensive and obviously they could be cheaper per se sure but like you're you are getting a high quality product yeah I don't know there's any doubt about 100 percent. they put a lot of pride and uh care into making sure that every time you buy a lego product it is exactly what you're looking for and nothing less yep and like everything's going to match together like so if you buy those mega box sets all the plastic looks like that plastic swirl like when they dump the fold in there's like mm-hmm. white mixed in you don't see that with lego no um, so again, they're talking about that. So, anyways, they're going through, and they specifically the the headliner of um, the article that grabbed a lot of people's attention, um, and then um, also Dan Becker of Bricks of Life also brought up on it um, that he's had the um, email as well that he published um, it was from Dave Dusen, uh, studio manager at TT Games, and this was actually sent all the way back on July twenty fourth. Um, so this isn't something like that. It wasn't an email this week. Cause that's what your gamer almost made it seem like that. It was an email that was sent out like this week. Um, or in that it was done and over with, uh, but back July 24th says, thanks so much to everyone, uh, for making dimensions possible as difficult as it has been. It is worth celebrating the incredible achievement. It represents in the quality of the game, the amazing blend of IPs and the challenging technical demands it presented. It stands as a real testament to the talent within TT. Thanks, Dave. Hmm. Um, subject line, re, uh, re, Wii U submitted. So I guess uh, Wii U was the last one they had to get approved for the <laughs> patch update. Um, so again, it doesn't in the email flat say it's ending, but this isn't also a happy, like, hey, good job, team. Can't wait to see what's next. Or yeah. about, like, it's, it's very much that's a thing you write in a, you know, a thank you card. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess here, here's how I see that email. Um, it's different than like an email that would have been sent to the people working on Disney Infinity because the studio was closing and everything was shutting down. Lego Dimensions team, like they aren't losing their jobs. They're not. Their, their studio isn't shutting down. Most of them, if not all of them, had already been reassigned to you know, either get the Ninjago movie game out and, and now are working on getting um, the Marvel Marvel Heroes 2 game out and then any other future Lego game products. Like, everybody just got shifted over to different products and, and games. So an email wouldn't have to be, like, uh, super sad and depressing of that game getting canceled, per se, because nobody's losing their job. They're just working on something else now. So it's definitely a different tone in the email than I think people are expecting to see. And right. I think that's why there's like still some hesitation to like fully be on board with the game being canceled because they're just like, well, the email didn't officially say anything and it doesn't sound too sad or anything, but it's like, well, 
what is there to be sad about when they get to come in the next day and still have a job? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, because a lot of people are saying, like, well, it's not canceled. They're just, they're just, they could revisit at any point. Well, it, anybody could revisit anything at any point. That's not, like, an argument, per se. You know, like... Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And, and your gamer specifically said in there that says... There are no plans I've heard to formally announce the end of Dimensions, especially as the franchise nears its last Christmas sales season. Eurogamer contacted LEGO Dimensions publisher Warner Brothers for a comment on this piece and was told the publisher was continuing to, quote, look at the future product slight. Like, okay. okay. Um, and again, yeah, theoretically they could come back in two or three years. But, like, if they do that, it's going to be completely different. Like, I don't think they would reuse anything from this one because they're not going to expect anybody to have the old stuff. You know what I mean? It'd right, be a right. whole separate thing or a new heading yeah i mean i it's not gonna go back and use this branding yeah um so yeah again to be crystal clear light dimensions is canceled it's done yeah. um but it, you know i i again i we were doing before and like who knows if they're going to announce when they're going to do it or not you know they might just one day just take all their social media accounts offline and poof there it goes yeah you know yeah wouldn't be surprised um, at all it it, it it does suck because I think people want closure and they want just that that final announcement to say, yeah, it's done. Thank you for everything. We're moving on to making more Lego games, so we're all good. I think people just need that. Some people need that before they go and sell or get rid of you know all of their figures and everything because they don't want to hold on to them for the rest of their lives. But without that closure, like, there's still that, well, man, that would suck if I got rid of all of this and then they come back next year type of thing. Right. Like, I get that. I understand that. And that's why you and I both have been big advocates for months now of them just coming out and saying, hey, we tried. We made an awesome game. You guys loved it. It was fun using all these IPs. But financially, it's just not you know, worth the development anymore. Um, you know, the the genre has peaked. We're moving on. Thank you for everything. Lego Dimensions was fun, but, you know, it's over now and off to something else. Like, that's, that's all we wanted to say, you know? Right. Again, it's not a, as sad of a story as Disney Infinity was because... The game got canceled, the entire studio got closed, all those people lost their jobs, and it was all just a whirlwind of just, like, immediate, like, it blind blindsided everybody. Yeah, it, it, even, like, people within the industry were shocked by it. Yeah. I mean, people were starting to understand it when more and more came out, and numbers came out as far as, I mean, I, I will go to the grave saying the people that killed her are the people who ordered the figures. I mean, that's that's what it makes it seem like, the person who like they specifically mentioned the Hulk figure, how much... The Disney Infinity themselves ordered production of that figure and just couldn't pay that much. You know, what I mean, if they wanted, if they would have went Nintendo route and tried to make it a little bit more limited, not even in that extreme. You know, even fifty percent of the number of figures they had, they would have done much better. But yeah, um, everything I'll say. Uh, I mean, the one thing we were holding out hope for um, is that whether Vortech was going to show up or not, um, and that is officially gone as well. Um, uh, as your gamer says, Year Three we've heard would have featured a return to Lego Dimensions' original universe, crossing storylines starring fan favorite villain Lord Vortech, voiced by Gary Oldman. And TT Games previously hinted to your gamer that Vortech was being planned as a special figure release. We've heard Vortech's pack was originally planned to be the last of Year Three to wrap up the whole series and perhaps unlock access to all the game's worlds. Later, after Year Three was off the table. Plan shifted, and Vortex was considered as a uh, finale pack to wrap up the franchise after year two, before being dropped altogether. And that, I mean, that would have been cool. Like it was, and that's what people wish Disney Infinity was that there was going to be like a master key at the end. You just drop it, it's unlocked everything. Right. Uh, that would have been a really cool release at the end. Like here you go, have fun, and everything is unlocked. Yeah. But. <sighs> and some people said like it could still show up in like a minifigure set, and like it could. But also, like, what what would it be in? You know, they're not going to have a Lego Dimensions minifigure right. set. You know, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I mean, it'd be hard to get all the licenses aboard for, I mean, 
as popular as those little minifigure sets are, I don't think they could make their money back on that. Sure. Uh, the and this is like a pie in the sky dream scenario type of thing. But the only thing I could think of would be is if they work towards a Lego Movie Two, and yeah. that Lego Movie Two brings in all these oh, different gosh, IPs that, awesome. that they have from Lego Dimensions. You know. Um. Yeah, I don't know if they even announced what Lego Movie Two's plot is. Yeah. So. And they would need a new villain. Like, I, you know, that would be a villain that's already established in their universe that's, you know, solely theirs to use. Again, pie in the sky type of scenario. But other than that, like, wh- how else would it happen? You know? Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. We've been saying this for months. The writing was on the wall for a while now. You know, once they started to go silent about everything that was coming out, um, the future past, you know, the last wave that came out, year three, like, they didn't show up to E3, they had nothing to say there, everything just was pointing in the direction of, they are probably done with this. Right. Um, it, it sucks, uh, but <sighs> it's not like they put out a bad product. Yeah, you know they put out a, a really fun product that had um, some amazing characters, some amazing writing. Um, overall, a fun game. Uh, I just think there was just too many figures at a price point right off the bat that I think that killed them. That's that sunk them on launch day. Right. You know. Yeah, and um, I was like Dan, and there's been some reported list already of what was planned for year three he's holding it just to wait for a leg of matches to announce what you know maybe they'll say something who knows but figured he'll let them do their thing and then if they don't then eventually he'll release the information but um he did uh, he did corroborate with what your gamer said about some of the stuff on there specifically mentioned minecraft mm-hmm. um and that uh, he was saying it was going to be potentially it's going to be a story pack to the bridge the gap between year two and three so actually that was going to be the canon content similar between two and three sure um and some other content as well um and the one thing that was also in this article that brought up a lot of people's attention was a scanner device yes um, that was gonna yeah. be able to scan your lego set that you could put on a toy tag into the game um and they've worked with some of the stuff like they there was that uh lego board game kind of thing where you use your phone or tablet and you could scan stuff in so um I, it's one of those things and they you know give him props for saying Greg Miller over on kind of funny game daily said about, you know, could they not develop this technology into like a cell phone or something? Cause yeah, again, yeah. you don't want to buy another, I mean, I think it would have been expensive in the light dimensions already know for being expensive. Mm-hmm. You can't imagine what that would have cost, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, I mean, that's a hundred, 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 150 off the top. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, he's Dan says he's seen an action in the article. I mean, I'm sure he has, but like, I, I don't know. I, I doubt it would be as good as people, you know, Right, hype it up to believe it to be, but and unfortunately, like that was what people wanted when the game launched. That's what people assumed that that that's what it was going to come with, or hope that it would come with. You know, something like that to where, you know, like e- even right at launch day, like when people were getting it, nobody could figure out like the different builds of the vehicles and such. They're like, well, how does the game know if I switch the Batmobile to look like something else? And it's like, right. well. The game doesn't know. You just have to tell it what it is. And it's like, oh, like there was that instant disappointment. And, and it's not it's it's not fair to even blame TT Games or WB for misleading people, because I don't think that was the case. No. Uh, I think they delivered exactly what it, they said they were going to. I just think people had higher expectations or higher hopes and didn't do their due diligence and research and figure out what exactly it was. So then somehow those higher expectations turned into disappointment by no fault of TT games, but that disappointment, you know, coupled with the high price point of like the fun packs and everything else, just people were kind of put off from the get go with it. And Dan does make a good point in this. I mean, it's you not to pick up an argument with it, but 
Ghostbusters 2016 was underwhelming as far as what the studio anticipated it to be. Um, and I, I, I would argue that that was a big problem with Lady Dimension Season 2 as well. I mean, remember the first thing was everybody's like, well, where's the Harry Potter one? You know, we got the Harry Potter stuff, but we're not getting a story pack for this. Right. Obviously, we already had the game, but people, I mean, if, imagine they would have had a Harry Potter story pack. That would have got a lot of people's attention. Yeah. And then he said about Minecraft. Could you imagine Minecraft was the launching story pack for Season 2, especially in a kid's game? Yeah. Would have sold like crazy hotcakes. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's a shame, but who knows? I, yeah. I, I mean, if they would have had Minecraft leading the way Season 2 at that point, let alone season three, boy, we, it'd be a completely different story at this point. Yeah, I mean, Minecraft is still top ten every month of games sold, and it's I, still. I don't know how like, that's possible. I honestly don't. It, it's like because kids keep, for whatever reason, aren't getting tired. I mean, obviously, kids are growing every minute into that age space, and for some reason, it's still hot in the age space. Because my nephew the other day asked me if I could put Minecraft on his phone. Yeah. on my phone and he's like I was like how the fuck do you know what Minecraft is <laughs> but like my one nephew plays it all the time and the other one like asked me to put it on and so it's you know it's still hot with kids yeah kids apparently grow up I guess that's I how don't. that works And I don't <laughs> uh, yeah I mean we could be having a completely different conversation if that's the case um, but I mean this <sighs> look folks we, we knew this was coming uh, we've been saying it for months and months and months that Lego Dimensions was done. Um, everybody wanted to disagree or hope for better things. It sucks. We don't want to be sitting here saying that the game is canceled, but it is. It is canceled. It's done. Do not expect a formal announcement at all. They're just going to let it, you know, ride off into the sunset. They're going to continue putting out regular Lego games they are going to be phenomenal. Like, I honestly cannot wait for Lego Super Marvel Super Heroes 2 or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be so fun. I can't wait. Um, and, like, playing that game will remind me how much fun I had with Lego Dimensions, but at the same time, it will also remind me how much fun it is to play a Lego game without having to worry about switching physical <laughs> figures around on a base. Like, that that's the plain and simple, you know? I love doing it, but man, it got annoying after a while. And that kept me from investing tons of time into it. Right. Um, yeah, and because a lot of people were saying about um, criticizing that there's no Switch version of it. And I don't know the numbers. I think we heard it before from Nintendo how much is played undocked versus docked. But there's no there's no way they can make it work on a, a, a portable version of Lego yeah. Dimensions. You know? Well, no. I mean, unless they, they did, can't. yeah, did it like Skyrim stuff, but the whole moving the stuff around the base and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, that would yeah. all have to be digitized, and at that point, like, what are we even doing here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And if they got rid of it entirely, then it's like, well, fudge that. I'm only playing the Switch version because I don't have to move stuff. You know, it's just yeah. a Lego game at that point. Yeah. Um, which again would have been fun, you know. Um, if they did just a Lego game without the minifigures, but it, it would be impossible to divvy up sales to the r- proper IPs and whatnot. But mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. And who knows? Like next year, you know, could still get some kind of surprise Lego game. You know that maybe they're working on something for Lego Dimensions, and it'd be like, hey, we're really excited for this. Sorry, we can't do Dimensions, but can we just do a full fledged game? Yeah. You know, who knows? Absolutely. Um, so that's that, I will folks. Say, yeah. I will say real quick. Yeah. Um, the email that was it was to um, uh, to the project team, like the the um, like the different teams that were working on Lego Dimensions, but the uh, the group names wasn't like Lego Dimensions art or whatever it was. It was their project name, the code name. And it was Lego Dimensions' code name, working title was Opus, O P U S. Okay. I expanded it to Octopus, thinking that's what it meant. But like Opus is an actual thing. One, it's like a, a web comic from a while ago, and also it's for a musical set of musical compositions. Mm-hmm. But if it was short for Octopus, that's a fantastic code name for Lego Dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I like, like that. Each separate tentacle. 
Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I got you. So, I got you. So, I'm hoping it's short for octopus. I don't think it is, but I'll give <laughs> yeah. him credit anyways. We'll say it is. Make us happy. Um, yeah, so that's that, folks. Uh, if, of course, if there's ever an official announcement, like, 100%, like, we will be on top of it. Uh, we don't expect it, especially any time before the holidays. Like, they're just going to let people go out there and buy the game and pick up all the different packs and everything. And I, I it will be interesting to see after the holiday season how much if any product returns to shelves. Right. You know, like that yeah, would be I, the definitive this is done. And I don't I don't think they're gonna announce it beforehand. I don't know if this will put a pressure on them at all. Um no, it's they won't care. Yeah, it's already like it's already out of people's minds. Yeah. You know. So they're they're definitely not gonna announce anything, but you know expect um, sales and clearances, and um, we will definitely keep you up to date on on what stores have you know start putting them on sale and that kind of stuff. But once supply is like gone through the holidays, like I said, if you don't see them, anything new come back on shelves, like they're done. They're they're not making yeah. anymore. So the only thing I could think of too is like they could sneak it into a developer interview with like launched around window of the Lego the Marvel Superheroes game. Yeah. You know, just randomly just like feed you know, spoon feed them a question and then just confirm it and like, oh yeah, unfortunately Dimensions is over, blah blah blah. And it's maybe but I, and... I think that that would have been done like around the Ninjago game. Since Ninjago were actually in Lego Dimensions. Right. That's you true. know, like that would have made more sense. But was the final wave out yet? Mm, I don't remember the timeline. I, I can't remember either. Yeah. Hard to say. But yeah, maybe. Uh, Who knows? We'll see. Um, you know, you'll definitely hear from us if, if that official confirmation does happen. But I, I just don't think that there's any reason for anybody to have doubts as to whether or not there's going to be any more LEGO Dimensions going forward. So Yeah. As sad as that is, like it's it's the harsh reality. So here we are. This is where we're at. Where we're at is pretty much the last uh, game franchise standing. Amiibo. Who saw that coming? Good job, Nintendo. <laughs> Who saw that coming? <laughs> Amiibo part of the podcast is sponsored by our friend Michael O'Driscoll. You can find him on Twitter at Amiibo underscore museum. Um, as I've mentioned many times before, Michael's wife uh, is a singer, is a uh, recording artist. Do they still use that term? I think so. Okay. Uh, it sounds like a, in my head, it sounds like a very dated term. You know, yeah. <laughs> musical recording artist. Uh, her name is Anya, A N I A. Um, her album is called And the Light Comes In. You can pick it up on iTunes, but if you want to hear it uh, first before you buy, you could uh, check it over, check it out on Spotify. Um, so, Amiibo. We still have Amiibo things to talk about, including uh, the most unceremonious release of Amiibo to date, which is tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, we got... Uh... Don't forget your Fire Emblem. There's still more coming. <laughs> more Fire Emblem. <laughs> coming out tomorrow, Fire Emblem Warriors. I, I... The only reason I care about this game mm-hmm. is it's not in my market, but the Joys for Games Twitter account tweeted out that uh, Nintendo Switch games are in select markets and Redbox. Yes. 100% would rent Fire Emblem Warriors for a night, and I yeah. would get my enjoyment out of it and be done. Is it? I think it's a 3DS game, isn't it? No, it's a it's a Nintendo Switch game. Also. Get out it's of here! Crossover. Yeah, is it really? Yeah, I sw- I've had it in my head this whole time that it was only a 3DS game. No, it's both. How about that? Huh. Fantastic. Yeah, I think it's both the same. Yeah, same day. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. No. Wow. Uh, I I I was at Redbox like a week ago and. I like looked up and there's a sign on like Switch games and I went to the menu and 
sure enough, there's a whole selection of Switch games to rent. I, as far as I search on Google and Twitter, I didn't see a single like you might have broke that news. <laughs> I don't think I saw a single other person reporting it. That's fantastic. Yeah, I when I took the picture, I, I did a brief search, and I'm like, I don't remember ever hearing or seeing this, but yeah, no. whatever, we'll go with it. So if you have one in your area, go support it so it comes to my area. Yeah, because. And again, a lot of it's like eShop titles, but like there's so many Nintendo games where I would like, and I know it's like a 3DS game, but like that that new Mario Luigi game that came out for 3DS. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I I wouldn't divulge many hours into it, but I would probably play it for three four hours and be like this was fun. Sure. You know, the, and that's like the same thing. Pokemon Tournament DX. Yep, that too. Yeah. Um, like so many games that like. I'm not saying they're bad games by any means. They're just not my games. Right. But I still want to enjoy them for a little bit. Or even and... a game like uh, Mario plus Rabbits, Kingdom Battle. You yeah, know, like, 100%. there's no demo for it, but that's definitely not a game that people were clamoring to buy. Like, unless you listen to a lot of podcasts and whatnot, like, it, it would be something that you'd be very wary about. So being able to check that out at Redbox for a night, pay the three bucks, be like, yeah, that's a game I really enjoy. And then you could go pick it up um, or say, nope, you know what? That's definitely not a game for me and, and move on from there. But Right. I love that option. Yeah. I mean, I was just talking to um, bro Michael the other day about Golf Story and stuff. Because mm -hmm. um, it's such a fun game, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's a game for everybody, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's hard to describe. Like, I love the game. It's by far. I'm surprised you're playing it, to be honest. I've clocked so many hours in that game. That's I think so I'm cool. like 15 hours into it, which is yeah. the most I've put into a game in a while. Right. Um, and every night I play for like 30, 40 minutes, and then I put it back down, mm -hmm. um, get my enjoyment out. But it's one of the things like I don't, I don't know what kind of person it would be for. Um, and now so I was like, remember like Xbox Live Arcade, where every game had to have a demo. Yep. Like now it's such a brilliant move. Now yeah. I wish that would be back for like all these eShop titles. Sure. I mean. If anybody's going to do it, it's going to be Nintendo. And, and yeah. you've seen demos for a few games, and it might be not um, a, a Nintendo thing, but just depending on who the developer or publisher is, like, do they want to spend those resources to push out something that would be a demo? You know, a like, Project Octopath demo is such a good idea, but so far out. It's so, yeah. like, hopefully do another one, because it's still, like, it's a good idea, but also, like, we're still, like, seven months, probably. Right. Really? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm surprised you like Golf Story. Like that. That that warms my heart, Jason. Did you pick it up? Yeah. Oh, I love that. That and Picross have been uh, my Switch mm. games of choice as I patiently wait for uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah, my gaming rotation right now is um playing that each night. Um, my mobile games. When I'm moving, I'm playing Pokemon Go. When I'm stationary, I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Sure. And I uh, play that each night, and I'm also, right now, there's a new Pikachu each week for um, uh, Moon and Sun, mm. but you can only get one per game, mm. so if you want to get one of the, each of the different Pikachus, you have to reset the game, you can only have one save file on it, so I've only really been playing on my Sun, I don't really play much on the Moon, so I just keep resetting the Moon, <laughs> and you have to play about like 45 minutes to an hour to get to like the poker center where you can get the mystery gift. Sure. So I have played the opening of moon like five times already. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? So it's, it's simple. So I'm just like watching a sporting event and I'm just, you yeah. know, taking my good old time. Absolutely. Uh, Pokemon events, Pokemon go event tomorrow. Starts tomorrow. Woo! Three o'clock Eastern time. Get those gen First three warmed up. Couple of gen three. <sighs> I'm so excited. Too. Yeah, I I Got just it. I love the double like, candy. That that makes yeah. me the happiest. Only thing that's gonna stress me out is getting that Pichu, man. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. walk like last time. I think I got like my second 2K. Right now, my entire egg slot is all 5Ks. Mm. Yeah, and I like, have. From, yeah, same. And I haven't hatched any of them because I've been waiting for a sale or something so I could get the super incubators. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna try and clear them out that way I can get just the event. Hopefully two Ks, but we'll see. Right. <sighs> Pokemon Go, still fun. Still fun. Who would have known? Um. Anyway, Amiibo. So we have the two Fire Emblem Amiibo coming out tomorrow. They're not exclusive yep. or anything like that, right? To anywhere? Nope. Okay. Nope. 
Uh, is it a two-pack? I can't remember. Uh, it has to be, right? They're not individual. I thought this one was one of the ones that was... I'll look it up. Fire Emblem... <laughs> This shows how much we know about Fire Emblem and Amigo. <laughs> it is a... Z- no. Yeah, no, it's individual. single. It's yeah. single. Yeah. <laughs> how about that? Well, Who knows? Maybe, again, like, it's going to turn out to be hard to find because... Yeah, you know, maybe they ship like two to each store. One of yeah. each. That was fun. <laughs> um... People will then, just like uh, waltz into the middle of the day expecting it, there to be plenty of them and they're not going to be any and it's just going to like light the internet on fire all of a sudden. Burn down tomorrow. Amiibo shortage. <laughs> 2017. That's all they have to do. That's all, as stupid as that is, that's all they have to do. I just want to know the Black Friday exclusive. That was my favorite Amiibo <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> Freaking best. Uh, what's it going to be this the, year? The one and only time I've ever been to a Walmart on Black Friday. <laughs> It's scary Actually, place. false. I went a couple years ago at like three or four o'clock in the morning when we were done everywhere else. Oh, to right. go see if they. I got like Fast and the Furious yeah. collection on Blu-ray. Sure. And like dive through their just massive pile of just Blu-rays on the ground. Yeah. Um Good stuff. But yes, after these, um, you're looking at Zelda Champions coming on November 10th. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that'll be your next release. Um, or sorry, besides the Odyssey that's set next week, which we get to in a second. Yeah. Then the Zelda Champions. Uh, um, are we? We're still not getting that four pack, right? That awesome four pack here in the states. Not that I've heard. That was just Japan, right? And Europe, I think. And Europe, okay. Yeah, because Japan, the box art was wrong. In Europe, they fixed it. Sure. Um, I, I just want people to have to buy a four pack of Amiibo. It yeah. just cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> But they, uh, one thing I learned today, which we'll get into in the, uh, the Odyssey, Silver Mario was never released in Japan. What do you mean? The Silver Mario amiibo? Oh, Silver Mario. I'm sorry. I thought you said yeah. Super Mario. I'm like, what? No, no, no. <laughs> Silver Mario. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. Learned that today. How about that? Um, yeah, and then we still don't know when the Shovel Knight amiibo are coming. Did that ever confirm, was that winter or was that 2017? I can't remember. I think it was just winter. I don't think they gave it yeah. a date on it. so Or even uh, a year. We'll see on that. But that's your next date to circle. So you got tomorrow for Fire Emblem. Or if you're listening to it on Friday, obviously today. Mm-hmm. Um, then you got next Friday for Mario Odyssey. Yep. And also then um, November 10th. Which again, or um, yeah, November 10th. Nothing I can see on that day. Is there any more DLC for that game? Um, they said it was coming in the winter also, but I don't think they officially yeah. announced the... We had speculated, that... but that it would coordinate nicely, but I don't think it worked yeah. out that way. Um, I don't think there's any other Nintendo properties coming out that day, so I mean, I, it doesn't have to match up with something, but... Um... Um... Oh, just kidding. Mario Party, I think, comes out. Isn't that also the Skyrim release? Yes. November 10th? No, so that's 17th. 17th. Is yep. Doom November 10th? Yes. Okay. That makes sense. In Mario Party Top 100, <laughs> yes. Um, hmm. Okay. So I'm pumped. Ah, Skyrim. Yeah. I want the VR version so bad, and I want the Switch, but I'm not about to drop 120 bucks buying like my fourth and fifth time of Skyrim. <laughs> But you might. Oh gosh! You have a wedding Dude. to plan. You can't spend that kind of money. Yeah. But man, same like that's why I'm like, I, uh, as much as I made fun of like the Switch being a handheld, you know, not really made fun of, but like I haven't taken my Switch outside of my house, right? Because there's no there's no situation where it's beneficial for me. All right, Paul, I took it one time over to Amy's house to play Mario Kart when it first came out, just sure. to show what it was. Yeah, um, you had to. You had to keep the tires I, on it. Yeah, I play. 85 percent of my switch undocked yeah on the couch um, watching something yep yep yeah it's and that's the thing because i'm a multitasker like i love watching tv yeah and that's why i think i love that's why i could never really get into zelda as much because that you have to focus mm-hmm. a lot onto it yeah and i that's just not what i typically game as much anymore like um but like i said golf story it's great de-dock it go lay in bed watch an episode of tv and then i go dock it again and it's 
fantastic. Yeah. I feel guilty putting playing the Switch on the big TV because it's like other people could be watching stuff or doing stuff while I'm playing this. Like, why am I, yeah. you know, monopolizing the entire TV when I could just hold it in my hand and still play and let everybody else enjoy whatever they want to enjoy also? Like, I feel super I, guilty about it. Yeah. It's a weird thing, man. I shouldn't... I, I want, like... It's going to be hard to not want to play Mario on a big TV. Right. But same thing. Like, I'm going to feel guilty about monopolizing the whole TV for that, so... <laughs> We'll see. I'm not. I'm not when uh when a new Pokemon game comes out. Mm-hmm. I'm like I'm tired of it being on the handheld. I'm ready to play. Sit back and play <laughs> yeah. on the console. Darn right, man. I will say I learned uh, my TV has a game mode. Oh. Before that, I had to make sure I turned on for the Switch because when I played in Golf Story, I was horrendous when it was docked. And I'm like, why is this? I was blaming the pro controller, thinking it was like I'm like, is there any kind of weird like sync for this thing? Sure. I realized there's a game mode. To, it, you know, stop the latency as much, and I'm like, okay, I'm back to getting my perfect swings down. Yeah. Uh, quick update: the Champions Ballad uh, expansion pass DLC Pack Two uh, for Breath of the Wild comes out holiday 2017. Oh, so they haven't put the date on that yet. Yeah, no. So theoretically, I mean, they could just say, "Hey, it's coming out November 10th." Yeah. Like nothing's stopping them from doing that. I mean, they just announced the Doom date. Like last week, so yeah, it which is possible. you know they probably want to get Mario out, let right. let it get out there. Once Mario's released, I would not be surprised to see them announce that pack coming November tenth. It sells more than Zelda, right? You think Mario? Yeah, hundred percent. I think so. I think it's more think... mainstream, I... especially this holiday season. What I think. Do you think it'll, it's going to beat the Switch install base? Do you think it dominates the Switch and the Wii U like total for Zelda? Yeah. I think it does. Mario games sell well. Yeah. And the holiday season and the bundle. You know, like, parents that are going to be buying Switches for their kids will see Mario in this. Mario is more of a household name than Zelda Breath of the Wild is. Does that Switch bundle come out next Friday, too? I believe so, yeah. That's going to be a hot seller, too. Good yeah. luck. Yeah, I, I um, it has to. I would think so. Yeah, so uh, for the Amiibo, we know before all the Amiibo are compatible. You know, they get exclusive different, um, just kind of like the uh, um, the Zelda Warriors game. Mm-hmm. Um, we get random items. But if you want actual costumes, um, some of the Amiibos do get you some shortcuts to unlocking those outfits. You can remember all the outfits that you can unlock with Amiibo can be unlocked without the Amiibo. It just gives you immediate access, which is fair. That's why I think Amiibo should be. Yeah, yep. it's a very simple. No one can complain about that functionality. Um, so all the ones that are um, obtainable. Again, I assume it's going to be something based on that character. Maybe just that one entirely. But um, you got these will be all Super Smash Brothers ones. Um, for Mario, Peach, Luigi, Diddy Kong, Bowser, Dr. Mario, uh, and Wario. From the Super Mario series, you got Mario, Luigi, Peach, Bowser, and Gold Mario, and Wario. Um, and Diddy Kong again, and Waluigi. Waluigi. Um, Waluigi, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what, that's what I learned, because I saw someone's like, where's Silver Mario? I'm like, yeah, where's Silver Mario? Apparently it's never released in Japan, so they it's not... It could be on the U.S. version. The source for this was from the Nintendo Japan website. The, sure. The, the your, uh, U.S. version of the site has not listed this information yet. Right. So it could change, but that's when I learned. I'm like, huh, who knew? Oh, um, it, would it surprise you if Nintendo was just like, we didn't put out a silver Mario? What are you yeah. talking about? Because <laughs> that was so weird. It's still so weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, both um, 8-Bit Amiibo. Now, this is the thing. I don't think we've seen that yet. Like, if it turns Mario actually into, like, an 8-bit 3D, like, it looks like the Amiibo, freaking playing that costume all day, every day. Yeah. But, who knows? Um, yeah, I'm excited. The Amiibo look great. All, all the upcoming Amiibo look great. Uh, and I, I think... And this is something that was 
uh, point of contention early on from the release of Amiibo that they weren't tethered to a game. They weren't important. They weren't necessary. They were just add-ons, you know? Uh, but honestly, that's why they're still around is because they're not tied to a game. Right. You know, the fact that you could use any Mario, any of the million Marios that you have can be used the same way in several different games because it just registers as Mario is the reason why Amiibo is still around. Um, because they didn't make them necessary for games. They made them add on content for games that, that wasn't super important, but you know, it, it gave you a nice perk for collecting them and the figures look really nice. And it's Nintendo properties. Like somehow, some way Nintendo got it right with Amiibo from the start. Everybody had questions. (laughs) From the moment it was announced, they're like, "Really? Hmm. Okay. Where, where's the, where's the Amiibo game? You know, where's the killer app for Amiibo? Nintendo's Amiibo like, Land. No. Where yeah. is it? <laughs> Nintendo said, "No, not going to do it. Not going to, you know, paint ourselves into that corner." So here we are, still talking about Amiibo being released with no end in sight, probably. Um. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, well, with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and head over to uh, the community question this week. Um, I put a $10 Amazon gift card bounty up for the mm. response of the week to this week's community question. That question was, in honor of uh, LEGO Dimensions, of course, what was your favorite franchise in LEGO Dimension and why? Also... What did you always wish they would include? Shockingly enough, Jason, we got tons of responses this week. So we got a bunch this week. Yeah, so let's get buckle to it. up. We got uh, Long's Toy says my favorite was Ghostbusters because it was super fun and led to other sets like the Firehouse. I always wish for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers. Um, Alan says um, quick shout to the Red Dwarf bunk room getting a cameo. Mm-hmm. Still completely random and funny. Yep. yep. Um, pay that's all we get of that, at least in Dimensions. Also, Power Rangers might get to be Lego soonish, and I wish Dimensions had lived long enough. Daniel says, My favorite is Doctor Who. It's great seeing that universe in Lego. I wish Spidey was included in Lego Dimensions, New York, Daily Bugle, etc. Mm. Brian says, Favorite was Scooby Doo. Wish Transformers could have come to the game. Helix Fossil says, Portal because GLaDOS was my favorite villain, and Wheatley, my favorite moron. <clears throat> Excuse me. Would love Rick and Morty, Lego, or Undertale. Tori Alex is probably Portal because it was so unexpected. I would love to have Dragon Ball Z because you could make Goku and Superman fight. Finally solve that. Riddle <laughs> who would win that? Is that a point of contention with people? Oh, yeah. Who would oh. win Goku or Superman? Uh, okay. My lack of Dragon Ball Z knowledge is astounding. Dude, it's so good. Apparently, Super has gone off the wazoo. Um, super good. I'm trying to stay spoiler free because I'm trying to get caught up in the English version, but it's mm. like 20 weeks behind. So I'm like, and everybody's just reading the subs on the Japanese version. So I'm right. like, I'm, somehow I haven't gotten spoiled yet. But all I know is I think we we went years with having like Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, and then Super Saiyan 4. I think they've had like 18 versions of Goku in this season. It's like every week it's like, oh, now he's Super Saiyan blank. And I'm like, okay. I feel like you're all going too crazy here. <laughs> I don't. Um, I don't know what anything you just said, but I <laughs> fully support it. <laughs> uh, Jeff Grimes says, "Loved all the original Ghostbusters figures because they were all classics." Uh, wish we could have had Bill and Ted or Blues Brothers. Hmm. Um, also, forgot to say, Dragon Ball Z Fighters Game of the Year 2018, and I'm going to be <laughs> terrible at it, but it looks freaking great. It does look really good. Uh, Matt Upton says, "I still haven't got um, quite." into it yet but mr t will be my first additional pack i pay the fool who doesn't love collecting toys of life uh oh firefly would have been awesome uh would have bought an instant if they had been a part of it i think we brought it for did you ever watch that series nope it's one thing that uh people continuously harass me about um i just no interest at all Hmm. i like i want to watch it but i feel like i'm gonna not it's just gonna be a letdown kind of a thing yeah like, oh that's what it was yeah but 
So I, I don't I, like, like I, in my brain. I wonder how it's aged. You know, like for sure, people that sure. watched it back then, I'm sure if they watch it now, like there'll still be that nostalgia that will keep them happy watching it. But a newcomer walking into it, I I, I worry that it's just not going to hold up. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Cube Conqueror says my favorite was Portal due to it kind of being like a trailer for the third game, which will never be made. Um, and I wish Zelda was in the game. Smart guy one five two says I wanted a Lego Doctor Who game before Dimension, so it was my favorite. I also wish for a deal for Marvel Fakes after Disney Infinity ended. Ben Anderson says I wish they had included SpongeBob as they already have. Oh, sorry, right out of order. Favorite was Simpsons because of the dialogue they had, and having them in a kid focused game is still amazing to me. <laughs> still very true. Yeah. Um, I wish they had included SpongeBob as they already had character molds and watched him interact with other cartoons would be funny. The Lone Goldfish says, was there a vase? Because uh, both of the best character and the sheer absurdity of its inclusion. That was still completely random. Yeah. And that was started out. Like, that was the first place you went to. Right. But. Uh, Grizzly Max says, Powerpuff Girls, simply because I grew up on the show. Money Morphin Power Rangers uh, would have been perfect. An epic battle between the Megazord and Stay Puff is the kind of crossover we need and deserve. Mm. Also, did he get the 240 character expansion he must have yeah totally because that's a long tweet yeah Grizzly Knox how'd you get on that list <laughs> even though I'm not a fan of it but good job for being on that list yeah uh, my favorite franchise oh sorry this was OMG it's Brady J uh, my favorite franchise is Doctor Who because I have good memories watching the show with my dad I wish they had included Sherlock as well as I believe there would be cool riddles puddles in that level that would have been interesting uh, Gator Bat says, I totally dug all the 1980s TV slash movie love. Sure wish the Power Rangers hadn't made it in. Lightning Star SC says, the Sonic level pack was actually well created. Almost like an actual Sonic game. As an addition, Phineas Ferb would have fit in well here. It's also true. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix back for a fur. Well, may I screw that one up. Phoenix back for fire. <laughs> uh, Close, close. It almost had it. His, his, I forgot he doesn't have the E on the handle. and Yeah. yeah. I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> uh, uh, Sonic, solid games slash story. I wish they would have added uh, Ash Pikachu as a team pack with Officer Jenny's motorcycle and a rideable Charizard. Still get bummed that Officer Jenny's not like in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Like I, I went to the police station. I'm like, oop, Officer Jenny time. I'm like, oh, she's not in here. No. <laughs> Denied. Uh, so Guard 77 says Marvel and Star Wars would have been nice, but thanks to that deal with DC, that was never going to happen. Uh, Star Wars pop fan says, my favorite franchise was The Simpsons because I liked how closely the level followed the episode it was based on. I wish they would have included close encounters of the third kind because the story would have lent itself well to the level pack. Mm. First time I think we've seen that recommendation. Yeah. Uh, DMU Girl 2008 says, Doctor Who was my favorite. It needed a full game. I always wish they would uh, could have done Lego Disney. Yeah. As did we all. Mm-hmm. Nathan Chandler says, favorite was Portal. It wins the most unexpected award. Um, I thought Pepper and the Brickster from Lego Island Games would have been awesome. Absolutely. Freaking Yeah. Uh, sure. Shandali says. <laughs> <laughs> also, Gosh. also, can we just pause right there and say, when we broke that Portal news, like that was the craziest night of Lego Dimensions ever. I almost, I almost wanted to go back, because remember all those people that like made fun of me saying it was shoddy journalism for that, and yeah. also shoddy journalism for Sonic. Yeah, uh, I was two for two on both of those, so you right. all can shut. Also, uh, <clears throat> Gremlins. Yeah, you just got that right. Y'all better listen to us. You know what we're talking about. Um, Sean Dully. Uh, yeah, sorry. I was just also thinking. I was thinking the other day. Remember that time we got the embargo. For the uh, Captain America figure. Yeah. And they never gave us the picture of what the figure was. Right. <laughs> so we did the whole episode not knowing what the figure looked like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Anyways. Uh, Sean Dolly says, Ferrets are Doctor Who and Sonic. Never expected them to be in Lego sets. And love that they are part of a project as big and fun as Lego Dimensions. Wish it would have had included Looney Tunes. It baffles me as why it wasn't considering its characters are so well known and it's owned by WB. Yeah. True story. That's true. That is. I don't think they still release them. There was a Looney Tunes, like, Platinum Editions they've been releasing on Blu-ray, uh, which were, like, super good, high quality. Yeah. 
you were like in a digibook, and I think I bought like the first two, and I don't know if they ever released. I think they released the third one, never got it, but I wish I would have continued those collections. Lean-tunes. Also, did you see like that classic cartoon service that Boomerang, I think it is, has one out now? No. There's a, um, oh man, classic cartoons subscription. I don't know if the Looney Tunes are on it. Um, it might be. Hey, there they are. Five bucks a month. Uh, stream classic and cartoons. Over 5,000 cartoons. It's officially live. Includes Looney Tunes, Scooby Doo, Bugs Bunny, Tom and Jerry, and more. Does it include uh, Nickelodeon? Or mm, Disney? No. Dang it. Not worth the $5 then, folks. Yeah. Uh, you can also get a $40 yearly membership, which is on to 333 Nope. Jetsons and. Uh, or just. It does not appear to. Pre- oh, this is a bunger. This is from uh, Verge article back in April, so things might change by now. But it says it does not appear that the previously advertised shows, like the Jets and Flintstones, are available at launch. Those expected to be added soon. Whoops. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> That's a good way to launch a product. <laughs> Two of the biggest cartoons <laughs> that we ever coming are not in it. It's one of those things like it's. I'm like, yo, I would love that, but it's like I, I would watch it for like a week and. Yeah. I would never. There's just too much content out there now. Yep. Of all um, sorts. For a winner, I was gut feeling Power Rangers. There's a lot of people that said Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. But I think I think I think Ninja Chandler said the best. Portal one's most unexpected. Yeah. Up till Sonic. Yeah. But still, you can still make an argument that Portal's still more unexpected because it's been not in the general realm of conversation in years. Right. I mean, Sonic was in Smash Brothers. You know, like, right. Sonic gets and around. New games coming out. Yeah. He's in the Olympics all the time. But who would have ever predicted Portal, the Portal video game, would be inside another video game? The, from the company of Valve, who yeah. doesn't recognize it anymore, except for when they tease it with that dumb Half-Life patch right. randomly the other day. Yeah. But also keeps their IPs on lock. Completely. Until that guy randomly posts out the Half Life Three script. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> that was the craziest morning of my life. Well, I mean, when you ten write year, it, ten years now the Orange Box was. Yeah, when it came out. That's crazy. Still the, the best video game deal there ever was. Yeah, amazing. Um, all right, Nathan Chandler. Uh, congratulations. Get a hold of me. I'll get you your ten dollar Amazon gift card. Uh, thank you to everybody that responded. It was nice, kind of getting a feel for what everybody liked in Lego Dimensions and, like, how vast the possibilities would have been and could have been if they continued to survive. You know, they could have gone so many different ways, so. I will say, I know you never played it, Lego Island, when we're just talking about uh, things that age well. Sure. Lego Island does not age well. I can't imagine so. it would. So if you play that game, just don't, it's not, it's not worth the time. Don't even go watch <laughs> YouTube videos of people playing it. Because it's like, this is all the graphics were. Like, there's like five buildings. Right. And that was it. Like, in my head, I envisioned like a city. So sure. Just don't go back. It, 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 it's best just to keep you at your word and, and just assume it was as wonderful as you said it was. So. Yep. Uh, let's do some emails, Jason. We got a bunch of them tonight. Everybody want to talk about Lego Dimensions. Understandably right. so. Um, First up, we had DMU Girl wrote in. Hey, guys. No quick fire questions, but I do have some things to say. It seems to me that they didn't think through the costing the cost of dimensions. Articles have stated that discounts were a major problem, but the recommended price, particularly for the starter pack, was ridiculous, especially in the UK, as we don't have 20% off pre-orders as an option. Uh, it seems especially poor value when compared to full LEGO games, which have hundreds of playable characters. I don't understand why they didn't use Dimensions builds and unique pieces to make normal Lego sets to help reduce the cost. The response to Year 2 was also as predictable was also predictable as I never expected Ghostbusters 2016 or Fantastic Beast to become major blockbusters, so why would you bank heavily on them? Also, I think one big uh, I will say Fantastic Beast like that was destined to be a big movie. So, yeah. If I've learned anything in the last year, is Harry Potter fans are crazy. Best best 4K movie I've watched so far. <laughs> Interesting. I believe it. It looked pretty good. Yeah. Um, also, I think one big problem is that I bought LEGO Dimensions because it was a LEGO game, and I love the mashup of franchises. I personally don't need the figures and would snap up a purely digital version in a heartbeat. 
The figures always felt like a fun puzzle gimmick, but no vital, but not vital to the game. I enjoyed making the models, but without something like the scanner, some articles have mentioned, the physical Lego seems unnecessary. I live in the hopes that either A, some of the popular franchises, example Doctor Who and The Simpsons, get full games, or B, that they do a digital-only game like Dimensions for franchises not big enough for a full game to be put together. I also felt like the multiplayer maps were a waste of time and resources, but I don't have kids, so I may not be the best judge. I will dismiss, I will miss Dimensions when I finally 100% it. I still need to buy a Teen Titans Go pack, but I will look forward to all the upcoming LEGO games. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, if you know of anything about LEGO games, it's that they have a crap ton of characters. Mm-hmm. And it is, it is, it's always been the hard sell for Toys of Life yeah. um, in general that, like, they could easily make this game without having to make you buy these figures, you know, and especially like with all those characters um, that now you have to buy to play it to get less of a roster. You right. know, right. it is it is a hard sell. It's one of those you kind of just have to like ignore the logic of it and mm-hmm. just go and enjoy it. And like I said, the best thing they made was when they did drop the price of the fun packs. But then the problem is you are now getting charged more for buying a team pack because you're getting the same as two fun packs, but it costs more, yep. which makes no lot. I mean, they, they, they screwed that up pretty dang on well also. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, yeah, it was just, it was just, this, I mean, it's always like, you know, always point back to one thing. And I, I think a hundred percent, everybody was just sticker shocked with Lego. And I understand like they have to keep the price at a certain point per se to keep their Lego brand price point also. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like we always said before, never advertised in the actual Lego aisle. Um, right. As we talked about before, there was a picture I think we, I brought up in podcast before. And I saw somebody um, tweet out saying, "Oh, this is interesting. Lego's advertising dimensions in the Lego aisle finally." And somebody from Lego Dimensions tweeted them asking what store it was because they want to contact that store. Like, yeah, you know, like it was a bad move, right? You right. know. And, you know, they could have done things like... I mean, the there, G- there, there are people that shop in the Lego aisle of stores that would never drift over to the video games or yeah, the Toys to Life it. section looking for more Lego stuff. Right. And, I mean, they could have done... I mean, people have gotten mad if it was an exclusive figure, but they could have put in a figure in some of the Lego sets, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, Double them over there. I mean, it was just weird that you have literally, like, the top-selling toy in the world, and you don't use it. <laughs> like, right. I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I would not be surprised if in the next couple of years we get... It might not be called Lego Dimensions. Um, might be something similar or close to it or whatever, but a, just a digital-only mashup of franchises that they have the rights to still use in video games. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me at all. And like I, I'm curious how how much it costs to do like the Doctor Who level pack per se. Right. What if they made those fifteen dollar experiences? You know what I mean? Just quick short if they made this for other titles, you know for, you know, stuff that wouldn't really be able to support a full game or they don't want right. to devote all the reasons to make a full game if they just made one where you literally just get to play as a couple of characters like you could in the level pack that were that canon 15 bucks and you got to play a Scooby-Doo mini Lego game. Or even like Absolutely. $5. Like $5 level packs or yeah. like sell a season pass. You know, like this game 100% could work in a digital version. Yeah. And I think it would be fun. It'd be a lot of fun. Yep. And you could add more playable characters that way. Because right. that's what limited it is, like, they weren't going to put out, you know, 800 Simpsons characters to buy because nobody would ever buy that many. But you could put 800 Simpsons characters into a digital-only version and be able to play as all those characters. Yeah. It'd be super fun. So, yeah, I, I, th- I think there's... Um, potential for it to to create something else in the future um but i think they they need to distance themselves a little bit from the lego dimensions that we know of right now before they do anything else to avoid confusion and whatnot so 
Yeah, the biggest bummer about it all is just still, like, I just wish we would have gotten a Vortex figure just because how cool it would have looked like in the flesh. Yeah. Would have been cool. Uh, next email is from Ben Anderson. Hey guys, it's Ben Anderson. I just wanted to say thank you to the both of you for keeping us all updated on LEGO Dimensions. I know it must have been hard, especially when people tried to argue with you about it, but it's very appreciated that you guys informed us for updates. I would have never known much about the game if not for you guys. For anyone who did not know, I am also LEGO Dimensions News, um, at Dimensions News underscore on Twitter. And the reason I made the account was I wanted to keep people informed about a Toys to Life game like you guys do. Thank you for inspiring me to make an account, and I was also able to meet so many new people thanks to you guys, so thank you. I never imagined uh, I would have over 700 followers, and I owe them all to you guys. Thank you for the past few years of fun I could have with this game. Thank you, Ben Anderson. Thank you. Yeah. Um, next up is our friend Green Armadillo. Yes. Um, I do have to check on something here real quick. Uh, okay, it says, Dear gentlemen, are you guys doing anything for PAX Unplugged? I seem to recall J- Josh was eyeing tickets on the air when they went on sale. Uh, if you haven't seen Light Seekers, um, the card game is hosting sanctioned tournaments. At PAX West, this was a good deal, where sealed deck tournaments guaranteed more Light Seeker stuff than the cost of the entry fee. Uh, I am hoping to get the chance to wish SCL Delivery Crab Matt a happy birthday, and the more, the merrier. Um, it is something that I definitely wanted to do. I just don't think it's going to work out for me um, to get out there that time of year. Uh, this year, um, it's been crazy around these parts lately, uh, so I'm going to be missing it. Jason, are you going to venture into philly it it depends i'm hoping to um we know matt is going to be there yeah um and i'm sure he's going to enter in that tournament um so i'm hoping to be there on one of the days um one of the game i think it's senior night for penn state that weekend so i might be going up to that i haven't heard yet if i'm going up to that week or not so it all depends on that gotcha um yeah uh green armadillo also uh DM'd me and asked if it was possible to get Matt um, on the air uh, to ask him personally about this, uh, but he is not on Skype, unfortunately, so uh, mm. Mm. not going to work out. But yeah, I, I know Matt is going for sure. Um, I'm sure we'll have an episode before then, so maybe we could have him on the show then to talk about what he's going to be doing, where people could find him and hang out and, and that kind of stuff, so... Um, yeah, uh, I hope everybody that is going to Pax Unplugged has fun. Uh, it definitely, there isn't a lot of hype behind it, which I think the people attending are probably okay with. Right. You know, smaller, yeah. more intimate for the people that really just want to go and go what they're going for. So should be fun. Did you see, uh, um, Deliver Crab got mentioned by Lacey himself? Uh, I did see that, yeah. So, congratulations to Matt for being the official, unofficial <laughs> resource for they recommended for buying individual cards. Yep. yep. Um, also saw one of the developers of the game bought cards from him. So, yeah. um, cool stuff. So, yeah, if you're into the game, definitely take a look at it. Yeah. Uh, next email is from Jeff Grimes. Uh, hey, guys, since we we're talking Lego tonight, which dimension set would you like to see made into a full-size Lego set? Set, not game, set. Ooh. Personally, I would like the A-Team Van uh, with all the guys or Giant Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Mm. Yeah, I, was thinking, I was thinking game. I was all ready to go for Scooby-Doo. I know, but, I know. Um, I mean, you said the Hogwarts Castle. Like, I can't yeah. get my mind <laughs> off of that right now. So. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, um, yeah, A-Team Van would be nice. I always liked, like, the... Um, the vehicles they've been doing recently they've been really nice high quality because a lot of times it's like lego's like best that they do are vehicles because it is hard to do like a building you know because either a you have to use your imagination a lot mm-hmm. or b they have to go like over the top right um but yeah I, yeah I would, 18 band sounds interesting yeah 
I'm hmm. trying to think what else would be. I mean, they did the Simpsons building. Um. Yeah, or the like, like I said, Hogwarts Hogwarts Castle would be awesome. Or you know what would be cool the um, the Emerald City. Oh yeah, you know mm. that could be big and really cool. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Cool. Thanks, Jeff. Next email is from Guadalupe. Hello. Just wanted to let you guys know that I'll totally listen to anything you guys decide to do in the future. You guys bring me joy whenever I hear you talk about anything, especially now when I have limited contact with my friends in Puerto Rico. So I'll follow you on whatever topic you choose. Thanks. Uh, P.S. What do you plan to do when that Ubisoft Toys to Life game releases? Get it, obviously. Yeah, duh. Spaceships and Toys to Life. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah, there's a lot of uh, potential Toys to Life things in the pipeline, but... I'm at this point now where, uh, because of Infinite Arms, I kind of have to see it to believe it, you know? Right, right. Like, just because they have a cool trailer or have a cool announcement for something doesn't mean it's ever going to make the light of day and and be a retail item. So, especially, like, once... You know, people kind of accept the fact that Lego Dimensions is done. Like it, it might start scaring off more people. You know, it, it's hard for for companies to want to get into a market that is essentially dead. So, yeah. uh, we'll see. Uh, but thank you, Guadalupe. Uh, Jason and I d- definitely haven't decided on anything yet. Um, uh, but yeah, we we're, we're not going to disappear. You could always find us doing other things. So, uh, last email. It's a long one. Let's just sit down. I'm ready. Uh, this has been from somebody that we haven't heard from in a while. Mm. Uh, but it's about time, you know. Uh, this is from Atari Alex. All right. Dear Josh and Jason, before I get to the most pressing issue at hand, I have a lighter subject I want to talk to you guys about. I recently, by which I mean a few months ago now, Watched Gilmore Girls on Netflix. Yeah. Largely in part to your recommendations. I have to say that while I enjoyed many elements of the show, some of the characters made me really mad with some of the things they do later on in the series. (laughs) But that just goes to show how invested I was in the characters, which I guess is what any show tries to do. Also, in my opinion, A Year in the Life did nothing for me and was pretty unnecessary. Also, also, the Gilmore Guys podcast is pretty great. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but I would suggest you check it out. Totally have heard about it. Totally have been recommended it. Um, Definitely want to check it out. I don't know why I haven't yet, but I I will say this about the Year in the Life thing. I think it hit home with a lot of people. Uh because there were so many people that had already watched the series and were just clamoring for more. If you were just now getting into the series, there was nothing special about that. Right. You know, um, kind of like, uh, Will and Grace being back now. Correct. (laughs) Uh, Val is currently like rewatching all the old Will and Grace and like powering through it. I'm like, that's cool. It's going to be weird to watch this new season though. Like when you get to that point, um, but yeah, it, it's it, it, a year in the life little mini series was definitely for the fans that were already fans. Did you see the stats that apparently, and I I don't know hours combined, you know, compared to it to other shows. Uh, year in the life was the most watched in its first twenty four hour span of any Netflix original TV show. Really? So people watched all of them in the first twenty four hours, um, and it said about like. There's there stuff, but the one I found interesting, there's five Netflix subscribers who have watched all of House of Cards within the first 24 hours when it came out. There's five people. Wow, that's <laughs> impressive. Uh, those five people were probably reviewing it. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Cause it, it's, a, it's a heavy show. Mm-hmm. I can imagine watching it back to back. I didn't even finish the last season I got. I'm done with House of Cards. These be like my favorite show, but <laughs> I'm done with it. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Um... Alex is not done. Okay, enough prolonging the inevitable. Let's get serious. Too soon? Yes, Alex, it's too soon. 
You know it's too soon. I already yelled at you on my other show about it being too soon. Stop it. Stop with the serious jokes. I'm not ready to move on. <laughs> it finally happened. We all expected it for some time now, but that doesn't help take away the sting. And yet, somehow, the news that LEGO Dimensions is ending doesn't hit me as hard as the cancellation of Disney Infinity, despite the fact that I collected the former but not the latter. The biggest reason is because probably the Disney Infinity announcement came pretty much out of the blue and was effective immediately, while the writing was on the wall for Dimensions for months. As far as I know, LEGO or Traveler's Tales still hasn't even said anything about it anyway. It's like if they refuse to acknowledge if they can just pr pretend like it never existed. But, as people on Twitter have pointed out, it's not all bad since TT could go back to devoting all of their attention to their other LEGO property games, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, and yeah, I, I do want to say, like, as we said before, like, the cancellation of Disney Infinity did come out of nowhere. Um, it shocked everybody. Like, there were a few people internally that, like, knew maybe hours before it happened, maybe a day. Right. Uh, and it was effective immediately. Like all future content was like they were in the middle of developing more stuff and got canceled. I'm pretty sure nobody is in development for anything Lego Dimensions related at this point. You know, um, and everybody lost their jobs. Like that was a horrible thing. Except JV, who got everybody's income and is now just globe trying the world ah. <laughs> with all of that money that they don't have to pay people that made the game. So that's cool. I rewatched that. Um, uh, remember when they made that special, the preview of what was to come that year? I mm -hmm. um, think one Disney Infinity Next or whatever they called that special event. Remember that whole thing? Yes, yes, yes. I watched it again the other day. So good. Yeah. <sighs> JV. Uh, now for an actual question. At this point, we've seen two Toys to Life franchises die with Skylanders petering out slowly but surely. Even Amiibo don't come out as often or with as much frenzy as they did in their heyday. Others, like Lightseekers, have tried to step in, but it seems that no one could capture the magic like Skylanders did all these years ago. Is this the end of the genre? Are consumers fed up with physical DLC? Is there anything companies can do to reframe public opinion? Was this just a passing fad we all knew was going to end eventually? Or could Infinite Arms be the savior of the Toys to Life genre? <laughs> Infinite Arms train, man. You know it. Yeah. I I think it's... it's we, I mean, we've said from the beginning of this podcast that it was going to be a phase and it was going to end eventually. Um, yeah, I think it's a year earlier than we thought it was going to be, but... Um, it, you know, it's, it's not a surprise to anybody. But, you know, a lot of people directly compare it to... Rock Band and Guitar Hero, and I think it's a fair comparison. Yeah. Um, so and, and they tried to come back, and people were just not receptive to it. Yeah. So yeah, it's. I mean, there's going to be something else down the line that's going to be the next thing, but mm -hmm. who knows what that is? When we started this show, we said that this was going to end. You know, um, the genre would not last forever. Um, it was a bubble. The bubble would pop. We've said it all along. Uh, we're not surprised by it. We're sad by it, sure, but we're not surprised. Um, White Seekers, I, I still, it still feels to me like they used the Toys to Life market with the figures and the mobile game as just a way to get into the card game. Yeah, like it seems like where all of their attention is, even still. Um. Which hey, I mean, they branched out. They like they put out cool things. I just I don't see the talk about their figures or the mobile game as I do with the card game. Right. Or maybe they just pivoted. Maybe they just saw you know what the market did How when well they released going. everything, and they said, okay, this is where we need to go. If that's the case, good on them. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, are consumers fed up with physical DLC? I think consumers are fed up with any additional content at this point that you have to charge them for. Like you see the outrage with like these loot boxes and games, like the last few weeks, like every website, every podcast, that's all they're talking about, you know, are loot boxes and blah, 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 blah. And it, 
we are transitioning very quickly into an all digital mm -hmm. uh, form of media and collecting toys to go along with your digital media just doesn't work the way it used to six, seven years ago. So, um, yeah. Uh, is this the end? <sighs> I mean, I guess that really depends on if you count Amiibo as Toys to Life. You know, <laughs> some people still don't count them as Toys to Life. And if that's the case, then yeah, this is probably the end. Um, and Nintendo will continue to put out Amiibo until they just get bored with it. Right. <laughs> you know, they could put out two or three for a game, call it good, put out two or three more in a couple of months, call it good. They're Nintendo. They, Nintendo does whatever Nintendo wants to do at this point. Did you did you read up on the um, the whole Internet One of Blaze Monday night about that Activision pan, patent or Monday night or Tuesday night, whatever it was, about the matchmaking with the microtransactions? Yeah, yeah. But when we talk about like the DLC stuff, in 2015, um, Activision made like one point something billion dollars on in-game sales. Last year, they made three point six billion dollars. Yeah, which is nuts. And like again, I mean, we talk. About, think how much money Pokemon Go makes, or yep. I mean, even like Duel Links. I spend probably ten bucks a month on that. Sure. Um, and I mean, again, I know we're getting sidetracked with it, but like that. EA canceled that studio um, that was making that Star Wars game. It sounds like they're going to make like a shared experience like Destiny because, again, unfortunately, it's going to make a crap load more money than a single player experience is going to be. Mm -hmm. And I think the same that's what's going to happen to this physical figure. They can make, they could sell those, you know, the characters for Disney Infinity of what five bucks a piece and probably sell a bunch more than they could the physical one. Yeah, uh, which is a shame, you know, because I I don't like buying, like I still DLC itself, I typically don't buy. Yeah. Um, Zelda's done well, and like the Mario Kart one, like I, those were a little bit different. They mm -hmm. felt more stuff, but some of the games where you get DLC like two weeks or a, a month after the game comes out really rubs me the wrong way. Sure. And like I remember the days like when you would get an expansion pack for like a PC game like a year later. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's DLC with me. But like, and it, I know it's the argument people make back and forth like, what is the full value of your game? But, like, if something comes out a month later, it could have been in the core game, yep. you know? Yep. And stuff like that just rubs me wrong. Yeah, so that's the thing. Like, it and digital stuff, um, you know, I, 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 it's why I haven't really made the switch over to digital entirely. It's just because it's that, if it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. You know, like, as yeah. soon as they close that stuff down, you can't get to it. Right. Um, I, I like my DLC, like you said, like later on as a way to bring me back to a game that I loved. Right. You know, like, I haven't touched Breath of the Wild in months. I put over 200 hours into it. I haven't touched it in months. But when that new DLC drops, I'm going to be so excited to go back and play that and, and start that game up again, you know? Sure. And that's what I like from my DLC is a reason to go back to games that I really liked, not as a way to just add content to a game that I just got. Right. Um, and stuff yeah. like the Dragon Ball Z, I'm going to be following that Xenoverse 2. They're bringing out more DLC, but they're like, but this isn't going to be included in the season pass, so you're going to have to buy it separately. Like, what the frick is that bullcrap, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, it, it gets yeah. confusing quickly, but. Um, well, that's uh, the last email that I had, Jason. So I think we should go ahead and wrap up this show here. Um, yeah, it sucks. Uh, like I said, we'll, we'll continue to keep everybody updated on potential sales and whatnot for Lego dimensions. Um, with the holiday season, people are going to be looking to, to get into it. Maybe this will be the right time for people, or maybe they're just going to ignore it all all together. But yeah, you know, we'll be here to, to guide you along as much as we can. Uh, Jason, uh, where can the people find you at my friend? You can follow me personally on Twitter, twitter.com. So last Jason inquires, um, Jason Quire is also the handle for Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, so you can sure check that out out as well. Uh, still looking just for toys centric um, news. You know, I said to Brick Inquire or Skylanders Inquire. Um, myself, you can find me personally on Twitter at the Noise. Uh, you could just go ahead and go to like J.K. Rawlings Twitter accounts and scroll down a couple days to people that she's tweeted to. Uh, you'll find my name right there. Um, you could, 
<laughs> Dude, it's so crazy. It's it's still getting likes. That is. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. Uh, you can find the show on Twitter at Toys for Games. You could email us, podcast at toysforgames.com. Uh, if you want to check out the Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash Toys for Games. Uh, you can find me on the Joys of Games podcast I'm doing with Colin and the Tales from Godric's Hollow podcast I'm doing with our good friend Matt Sonnenberg as we read through Harry Potter for the first time. First for me, tenth for Matt. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A um, lot of fun over there. Uh, well, thank you to everybody. Um, we'll probably be back in a couple of weeks or so when we have something else to talk about. We'll, uh, you know, maybe brace you for the upcoming Zelda amiibo or something like that. But uh, until then, happy hunting, collectors. Thank you.